So let's talk a little bit about pseudocode. All right, so pseudocode is a generic language that we use to communicate uh, programming. The great thing about pseudocode is it doesn't require us to know uh, the same programming language. So I can talk to somebody who understands Java, I can talk to somebody who understands SQL, I can understand, talk to somebody who understands uh, Rails, whatever the language is, because this, this, the things we are learning in this class are, are pretty generic to all programming languages, variables, loops, uh, control structures of all sorts, um, data structures, all these things that we're gonna do are pretty universal with language. Uh, so when we wanna communicate, we need to have a way to be able to say, do this thing, right? Um, and we need to be able to say it in a way that can be understood by others. Now, the great thing about learning this, um, it's not really a language, but learning this way to communicate is that it also really benefits us early on when we're learning how to program because we can actually discuss things in a way that's kind of meaningful. What do I mean by that? Well, I, I get this a lot. Um, my code doesn't work. I need help. All right, and uh, so that's that's kind of a problem. Um, I, I don't know how to answer that, right? Okay, your code doesn't work. You need help, great, I'm here. What do you need help with? Well, I got this thing and it's supposed to do stuff, um, but I can't get it to do anything. Well, my answer is, well, nouns are important. What's the stuff? What's the thing? What are you trying to accomplish? Right? And that's kind of the challenge with early programmers is uh, I hear them say a lot, they couldn't get any help. Um, and it's not that people aren't trying to help you. It's that you can't communicate. You're literally speaking a different language. So think about it this way. Um, if I were to put this out there, I'm gonna make this so you can actually read it. Um, I'm working in my code editor just so you can use to get used to colors. So you'll forgive me here. Um, but let's see here, signs it to a variable. However, I don't get any output. Now, don't worry about those pound signs. You'll learn all about that. It just makes it all pretty green for now. We'll talk about that. This is, this is the same question. <laughs> Right? I've got a line of code that asks the user for input, then assigns the input to a variable. However, when I print that same variable, I don't get any output. Now, this probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you yet because you're very early in the semester, but I promise you in just like a week, this is gonna be something that you're saying all the time, right? This is one of the first things we're gonna learn how to do, uh, which is ask the user to type something in and then print that right back out on the screen. Well. With this first one, my answer would be, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> I, you know, you could send me your code. If I have time, I'll look at it. Um, but you certainly can't send your code to other students. So you can't post it out uh, for everybody to look at and respond to quickly. Or, so that's a problem. Um, however, this, this question, you could actually post right to our public discussion forums, right? Um, and anybody could respond in, in a similar manner. Uh, that's not, it's not cheating in my book. As long as you're working purely in pseudocode, you can tell each other almost anything uh, in our public forums, right? So I've got a line of code that asks user for input then assigns that input to a variable. Um, when, when I print that statement, it doesn't give me any output. And that's, you know, somebody can look at that and go, okay, well, did you check your assignment operator and make sure that it's, it's an equal sign? Did you make sure that your variable is one of the names that's appropriate, it's not a wrong name? Is your print statement, after your print statement, do you have your variable inside of parentheses, right? So they can hit the, the top three things that people miss, right like that, because they can see what the question is, right? And this becomes more important. As, as you can imagine, uh, at the end of a semester, when our code is 250 lines long, um, nobody, can even guess. But no, well, what part of the code? <laughs> you know, I don't even know what you're working on. Um, so this ability to communicate in pseudocode becomes very important. There's no perfect pseudocode language. I'm not gonna say you must say this word or that word, um, but it is something you need to practice. The other thing that you're gonna see is that everything you do has to be um, commented. And that's this, this green mark here we're gonna talk more about. Comments are required. So if you write a line of code 
that asks the user for an input and prints it, then you actually have to write this pseudocode to show me you understand. Right? So learning the pseudocode early is important. You'll see that I use pseudocode throughout the course. I'm constantly giving you examples. All of my responses are going to be in pseudocode. All of my questions are in pseudocode. Um, so take this part really seriously. Um, be sure that whenever you see things preceded with this hash mark, you know those are comments. That's the same as pseudocode. Um, and make sure you're paying attention and learning how to communicate using this. I promise if you learn how to communicate your questions effectively in pseudocode, this class is so much easier when the content gets hard. Right? Good luck.